Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 935. Hey, if you want to download this workbook 935 to 936, click on the link below the video. In this video, we have a little data set, and we need to look through the call length in minutes column and find the maxed value below a lower and upper date. Now, there's a great function in Excel called DMAX for database max. So if you have a proper database with field names at the top, records are in rows, and you can set your criteria and field names up in a certain way, then DMAX is the way to go. However, oftentimes you want to build a template like this, where you have a series of dates. And so you want one form that you can copy down. DMAX just will not work there, because DMAX, as we'll see, requires a certain setup for criteria. All right, let's do DMAX first. Now here's our lower and upper date. Now, when you use database function, dmax, dmin, dcount, dsum, there's a bunch of really great database functions, you have to put field names at the top and then criteria below. So our criteria is going to be greater than or equal to low date and less than or equal to the upper date. But it has to have this form, field names at the top and criteria below. Then it's just a simple. Um, uh, the dmax function. So let's go ahead and create. I'm going to keep this date here. Actually, you could go like this if you had no requirement that you were going to use this in some other situation. You could just go less than, greater than, or equal to. And actually, the d functions understands that. But I'm actually going to make a formula to retain these as serial numbers up here. So I'm going to say equals, and then double quotes greater than or equal to, and double quotes, and the join symbol, shift, uh, ampersand, shift 7. And I'm going to join that. Now that gives you the serial number. That's how many days since December 31st, 1899, which is fine. It works. If you had to show it as a date, then we'd have to do something. Because formulas can't look at number formatting. In that cell is a serial number. That 7-1-2011 is just a number formatting. So if you have to, formulas don't see that number formatting. So if you have to force the issue, then you'd have to use the text function. Text function takes a value. and if you specify the number format you want in double quotes, it'll display it that way. It actually converts the number uh, number to text. So I'm going to put double quote, and then I want month slash d slash year, year, year. That is the custom number format in double quotes for uh, a format that looks like this. Control Enter. I'm actually going to cheat and copy this over, because I didn't want to recreate it, and then just change this to less than. All right, so there we have our lower and upper date. Let's click in F9 and use our dmax function. You can see here there's dcount, dcounta, dsum, uh, standard deviation. There's all sorts of great ones. But we're going to use dmax. And the convention for all of those d functions are the same database. you got to have field names at the top, records in row. I'm going to highlight the field names, Control Shift Down Arrow, and I'm going to jump back up using Control Backspace, comma. Field means the field upon which you want to calculate the max. I've put the field name right above, comma, criteria. Field names, criteria below, tab. And so there it is, the max call length between these two dates in this data set is 41 minutes. Now, the one problem that may happen here is that there may be duplicates. So I actually want to do a second D count, but it's going to be dependent on the result from here. So we have our criteria up here. Are we going to add a third criteria upon this column here? So the two dates, we have to find dates that are between these two, and we have to find that minute. And we're going to count. If there are any duplicates, we'll get more than one. So I'm going to say equals this, and then Enter. And now I'm going to do, oh, by the way, I have this um, data set randomized. So if you hit the F9 key, it, it is randomizing uh, numbers. So now we're going to use dcount. Count number, so the whole database. Control Shift Down Arrow, Control Backspace. OK, there we go. Comma the field. This time it's going to be call length, again. And then the criteria, same criteria, except for this 
uh, third field name and criteria, exactly equal to 41. So right now there is one. If I hit F9, well, there might not ever be any on that particular one. Oh, there we saw just for a flash. All right, so that is great if you just want it between two dates. But if you want it between a whole bunch, then you got to switch over to an array formula. Now there's no max if function. So instead, we're going to use the max function and put our if criteria, or the if function, inside the max. Because really, what do we want? We want numbers from this column, but only numbers that meet two criteria. Every single particular date has to be greater than or equal to the smallest date, less than or equal to the upper date. So inside the max, I'm going to say if. I'm going to click in the date, control shift down arrow, F4. I'm actually going to copy that. Anytime that date is greater than or equal to this, that's one condition. Notice, logical test, we've given it a whole range, which means it'll get a whole range of truths and falses. That argument's expecting a single true or false. We give it a bunch. That makes it an array formula. Comma, value of 2, well, we're not done yet. So we put our second if, control V, less than or equal to our upper date right there. Now, our, both of our conditions are there. You can see the second logical test. Now when I type value of true, now I have to go up and get the call length column, control shift down arrow, F4. There's my value of true. Now I don't need the false. The false will just dump into as a false and be ignored by the max. So I'm going to close parentheses on that one. Notice I'm reading my screen tip. I still have to do close parentheses on the first if. And there I have my max, so close parentheses. The keyboard shortcut to tell Excel that you're doing an array formula is control shift and enter not just enter. Now look up here in the curly bracket, uh, up in the formula bar. You see those curly brackets? Excel put those in automatically, and that's Excel telling you it understood that this is an array formula. So now I can double click and send it down. Now in 2010, there's a function that will help us avoid building this max if. Now we're still going to have to build an array of trues and falses in it. But this new function called aggregate does not require control shift enter. So let's check this out. Now watch this. I'm going to cheat. I'm actually going to copy both of these. I've already all three of those. I'm just going to copy that and then cheat when I get to the aggregate. All right, ready equals aggregate. Cool thing is there's all these functions. Notice there's a max. But guess what? 13 to 1 do not allow array calculations. It's only 14 or later. So check this out. I'm going to do something that's not intended. I'm going to use the large function. Now, usually, when you're getting the max, you use the max function. When you're using large, you get the second largest, third largest, fourth largest value. But I'm going to use large and just say 1. I want the first largest. And it will be like, it's the max function. Luckily, this one can handle arrays. All right, so the function number is 14, comma. We need to avoid divide by zero errors from our array. So I'm going to say ignore errors, comma, and then the array. The array is going to be in, watch this, I'm going to control V. Now we have to be very careful how we create this. I'm going to copy this or cut, and I'm going to paste it. I'm reading the argument, right? I'm in the beginning of the array. Control V. And I'm going to divide that by, because that has all the numbers. But I'm going to divide it by a series of trues and falses. So I'm going to open parentheses, open parentheses. The first test is going to be that. So notice I put two parentheses and then an open parentheses. Now I'm going to do the multiplication symbol and delete, delete, delete. And I'm going to come to the end and do close parentheses, close parentheses. Now this is multiplying trues and falses. Only when you get a true and a true will it result in a true. When it's true false or false true or false false, there'll be a 0 in the denominator. That is why we have to use that number 6 up here to tell it to ignore those divide by zeros. All right, so there it is, that whole little thing. And actually, we could hit the F9 key to evaluate and check this out. There it is. 
there's a 10. So this match the value 10. All the rest are divided by 0. Now I'm going to control Z. That F9 was just to look at it. Now, comma, and look at this. K, we could put any number from 1 to whatever, so I'm just putting a 1 to force it to do max. Close parentheses and watch this. I'm not going to control shift enter. I'm just going to control enter. Notice no curly brackets up there. Double click and send it down. All right, so that's a great uh, way to do it in 2010. Now, the question remains what, you know, if you're doing max if, sure, we have the call length, right? 66. But wouldn't it be nice to know who the employee is? Well, we can use the dget function. That is only if we don't have any duplicates. All right, so let's see how to do the dget. So I'm going to, uh, this employee name, or watch this, I'm going to say equals this. And the reason why is I want to make sure for my, in fact, all of these, I did that. I don't want any spelling errors, because if the field names here aren't the same as the ones up here for dget, then it doesn't work. So employee, I'm going to use equals dget. You've got to be kidding me. That is amazing. It's like VLOOKUP for databasing. Control shift down arrow, control backspace. I'm going to scroll over here now that I have the whole database, comma. And the fields employee and the criteria is this one, two, three criteria. And there it is. Now, if we did have, oh, and watch, we can hit the F9 key and it will just, because the data is randomizing, it'll pick up whatever new uh, employee it is. Now, the problem is what in the world do you do if there's duplicates? Over here, in our next video, I'll actually show you how to extract with duplicates, which is you know, quite complex. Um, but if there are no duplicates, it's great. So we looked at dget, dcount, dmax, when you have just a single uh, set of criteria. We saw max if if. We saw aggregate. In our next video, we'll see what to do if you actually needed to have all the employees names extracted, including the duplicates. All right, see you next video, 936.